Complaints about the movie Starscream lack of color. Some would say it's like a three-year-old glued scrap to a kite, but yeah. Well, don't worry, we fixed it. They still didn't give it the G1 Deco, did they? He's got graffiti. Dude. Join us! Starscream is one of the leading names in Transformers, commonly referred to as the second-in-command until Megatron needs to take some time off from their relationship and see other people. In the film, he could also be in the DC Universe as Kite Man. Hoi 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 hoi! Oh, that is the best joke in the past 13 years. You can tell I've heard a Dorito joke a few times. In the film, he's still at the heel of Megatron, but rarely is he seen. Still, he can pose a threat as long as he doesn't underestimate the opponent he faces. Slippery, menacing, and terrifying, he may not be the most challenging, but he's difficult in his own way. We've taken a look at the original Deco from Studio Series, so we might go over some of the basics, but this repaint transforms into an F-22 Raptor, and I guess at this point, Starscream was already done with hiding before the Fallen even showed his face in public. Oh yeah, just put some stripes on, charge the same price. Do you think anyone's gonna buy into that? Well, I did. What was the thought process on this anyways? You could tell it was during a writer's strike. Hey! Put stripes on Starscream because it looks cool! And have Soundwave float for a bit! Comparing the decos, I like the simple, grounded deco of the early version. Yes, the new one seems exciting, but they decide to break it up with chunks of dark ray to cheat. It doesn't help that on the back between the wings on top, one side is marked, and the other remains untouched. Not to mention the main color. I think the desert reflection in the film, he comes off with a brown tint. The original had a lighter blue mixed with the light brown that's nearly gray to give it some, what I assume, reflective color effect. This is like taking the brown and bringing up the hue a tad. Like I said, it is more exciting though. He's covered in markings, but it's in that sandy paint like the Prime smokescreen figure. I feel like it would come off easily. And with so much going on, I don't want that. I mean, would you even notice? At that point, what's stopping it from being a siege figure with all the scratch details? I like the orange tinted cockpit, and he does have landing gear, you just need to find it under all this kibble. No sense in complaining since this is pretty common, but for the most part, it is pretty sleek. Weapon can store in the back similar to the original, but now there's an orange saw? Okay, if it wasn't exciting before, it is now. It's also transparent orange, and since it's around the jet boosters, it could pass as some fire blast effect. You could also port more weapons on the back wings, in the arms, and under the main ones. Even take the original, plug them under both, and now it's all even. You know what's funny? Both the second and third film use this color palette and markings. This mold is very much based on the Dark Moon toy, which inspired the first Studio Series figure that got the original deco. If you're confused, let me simplify it. Tattoos come full circle. For the most part, the markings are consistent, and you do get a few Decepticon logos in it. I just like the fact that he's got jet boosters. How's the masterpiece doing? I think some people will get the edgy, covered in tattoos version of Starscream over the more realistic version, simply because there's a little more going on. I get that, it's just a personal thing. Still, I can't deny it's pretty nice. Plus, the jet does a pretty good job, if you don't care for the kibble under it. Robot mode. Robot mode, Starscream's sinister, slithery, and creepy demeanor continues with tons of dark paint applications throughout. Like in alt mode, the only difference continues to be his paint. Not sure why he decided to do this, or when he took the time to do it, but I guess he needed a hobby. Compared to the original, which seems subtle by comparison, this Starscream mixes a lot of the colors. Dark gray, light gray, the main light brownish color, gold, and the black stripes are like someone vomited paint that couldn't physically blend. He still has the stripes, but I just don't know if it works. I think he was darker than the robot anyways. Is that even a brownish gray main color? Are my eyes playing tricks on me? I'm just gonna call it that. I appreciate all the colors going into it, but for example, the head doesn't blend with the dark gray, and the beams in the chest I would prefer to see in that brownish gray. I also think the stripes could have been better. Did they spread a lot of the dark colors to make shortcuts? 
He should be covered in stripes, and I just don't see it here. Even in the legs, only one is properly painted. At the same time, he also comes across as more dark and menacing in the Stecco, so to each their own. I just like how consistent the original one was. This is like some kid's art project. Oh cool! I'll put it up for everyone to see and not in a drawer forever. That head sculpt works though. I mean, I like the touches of blue on the original, but that bird-like style and deformed beak is pretty iconic to this form. It may not be the favor for everyone, but I immediately understand who this is. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Head rotate, shoulders out and in, forward and back, another out and in, rotation below, bend, elbow bend, ball joint wrist, hips out and in, forward and back, knee, rotation below, another knee, and toes move. Posability is pretty good. I feel it could use more in the legs considering the movement in the film model, but we're not going to get movable fingers like the masterpiece. I think what we got here is good enough, and thanks to the deluxe engineering, we got big heels to stand on. Let's take a look at the accessories. Little story, I knew we were getting the Revenge of the Fallen deco based on the saw blade. The the first time we saw this was in a stock image. People were upset we didn't get both weapons in the original deco, but I had a feeling it was either a mistake or test shot with both pieces. I assumed a repaint follow-up would contain this piece. And look! I got bragging rights. Just like the missiles, which you can use both weapons on the original or the repaint, you can plug it onto the back for storage, underneath the arm using the peg, or with the tabs, fold up the hand and plug it in. Seems proper, though the hand is right there. You could rotate it, but without the elbow, that just looks awkward. The saw could pop out. Don't know if you needed that information. <laughs> I'm glad we've got a direct linked figure from one deco to the other that can compare, uh, swap weapons. And I love the Voyager class that seems to fit with the Studio Series toys, including Megatron. Also appreciate the mods to the mold with a better chest design, better hands, and molded in rockets. There's holes on each arm and three on the back. Oh cool, you can add Null Race and he doesn't even come with them. Bad figure. Sorry, baby, I love you. If you got the original Starscream, which was likely easier to get, then you probably don't need this unless you really want the stripes. I don't mind having it. The figure was in the store, it was at normal price, so I said why not, especially since I love the original figure. I think personal preference is going to be the deciding factor, but that's only if you're going to get one. I'd say both are fine back to back, or set up for different collections within Studio Series. Only issues that are different is how I feel about the paint, but I don't even hate it. I just have my critiques with it. Let's laugh at triangles.